Give me is Tony Irwin, Chair of Engineers Australia, Sydney's Nuclear Engineering Panel. He's helped to commission and operate eight nuclear power reactors and was the first reactor manager of Australia's Opal Research Nuclear Reactor. Uh, Tony, great to see you again. Did you learn much that was new today from Peter Dutton about his plans to build seven nuclear power stations around Australia? I, I thought it was good in that it brought together all the issues in one speech because we've had all these different parts of it and it, it brought it all together. He made the five points about why renewables isn't working and we, we've seen increased prices with increased renewables, particularly in South Australia. And as you said, as the solar panels cheap, but then you've got to have the the storage, the transmission, etc. But also, you've got to build over capacity to be able to get enough during the day into the storage as well. So that's another additional cost. And as you say, the lifetime is, is a big problem. And then he made the five points about why we must include nuclear in the mix and why other countries have successfully used nuclear. And, and you know, particularly because it's independence of the weather. You know, we're getting increased problems in weather. Nuclear is the only low emissions uh, technology that is independent of the weather. Now, I don't know if you know what seven nuclear power stations is going to cost, but do you know, if you do, tell us, but do you believe that whatever the cost, <laughs> it will be cheaper than wind and solar? Yeah, OK, so you, c you can do a rough calculation and get some sort of idea, and it definitely comes out a lot cheaper. You know, they were talking about $122 billion for for wind and, and, and solar. So what you, what you can do is you use the gen cost figures for large nuclear, um, and then you can say, well, all right, let's have five sites with a gigawatt each, that's $43 billion. two sites with two SMRs each, that's another $10 billion. So you're in the, the sort of 50 to $60 billion, rough, rough sort of idea compared to the $122 billion plus for renewables. You know, th these aren't... You know, these are figures that's got to be fully justified, but that's the sort of ballpark you're in. So it's, it's definitely cheaper. And, uh, yeah. But from, from your guess, uh, from your estimation, it's half the price. Uh, the thing, of course, is that meanwhile, the government's yeah. uh, building all these or encouraging the building of all these wind and solar farms. A lot of them will not be uh, viable once nuclear comes in. That's, that's why, why you're hearing all the screams. That's just lost money, a lot of it to super funds, by the way. Now, meanwhile, so Labor says, no, 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 you're wrong, Tony Irwin. Well, not you specifically, but generally, the, you know, wind and solar are cheaper. Their plans are to get 82% of our electricity from renewable energy in just six years' time, just six years, more than double the power that we get from them today, and then even more later. Here's Peter Dutton on that plan today. No country can run effectively on part-time power, on solar, wind and batteries alone. And yet the government is doubling down. It's rolling out intermittent sources of energy on an industrial scale, and it's removing 90% of essential 24-7 baseload power over the next decade, between now and 2034, with nothing to replace it. Now, Tony Owen, is Peter Dutton right that uh, the Albanese government is destroying the electricity system that works, all these coal-fired power stations will be driven out of business, without having a viable system to replace it? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, you, you can see that how difficult it is because you, you're building out these renewables far away because you've got to have enough land to be able to build it. Um, then you've got to have very long transmission links to link it all up. And, you know, we, we've, we're starting to look at the environmental damage. We look at Queensland and the Great Dividing Range and, and all the the wind turbines that have been put through that area. And it's, it's absolutely devastating. 
And you would think that all the green groups would be coming out and saying, no, you can't do this. But, you know, they seem to be completely ignoring it. And yet it's it's having a, a real effect. And also, of course, farmland in, in New South Wales in the West is, is affected as well. Tony Irwin, look, thank you so much for bringing some expertise to a debate where we get so much spin, so much disinformation and so telling silences about things like cost. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much.